we are going to take a look at antibody production using some silly little cartoon graphics. You can skip over this and go to the notes if you want, but for now, let's just take a look at what our body does when bad guys get in. And I'm talking about pathogens. So let's see, pretend they're bacterial invasions. Uh, for now, this green guy here is going to represent a macrophage. A macrophage is this big, giant white blood cell. It's kind of like a Pac-Man goes around and chomps things up. So that, from here on, will be replaced with this. We'll call it a macrophage here. Um, here are our bad guys. And these bad guys, that's the bacterial cell, let's just say. And these little yellow dots are the antigens. The pathogen and the antigen are the little proteins that are on the outside of this bacterial cell wall. If this were a virus, that could be antigens on the outside of the protein coat. We have a type of cell here called a helper T cell. This is a type of white blood cell. HIV, by the way, actually attacks helper T cells and you'll understand at the end of this, hopefully, why HIV is so bad. Another type of white blood cell is called a B cell. So these are B cells, these are B lymphocytes. And these little colored things attached to them are, uh, we're gonna call them antibodies, antibodies, okay, for now. So here's what basically happens. When one of these bad guys enters your body through a cut or through saliva or something like that, what will happen is these macrophages in general will come and then try to take them in by endocytosis. They don't care. They're just going to, this plasma membrane is going to fold and it's going to, and it's going to get sucked right in there. Once it gets sucks, sucked in, it's going to be digested down by lysosomes that contain enzymes. And then the very end, the macrophage, it's going to hold up its uh, work like a trophy. And it holds it up through a little kind of a trophy cup that looks something like this, okay? So the trophy cup comes out like this. And at the end of that trophy cup, it's actually going to put inside something. It's like a remnant. It's like, a, I don't know, Game of Thrones style when you, know, you defeat your enemies, you carry their skulls or their hands or something like that. So uh, the macrophage is actually going to show on this particular protein um, one of these antigens. Can I separate it out? Here we go. Uh, ungroup. So it's going to do this, and it's going to take one of these antigens and present it outside. So the macrophage is going to look like this, presenting some of the antigens that are out here. And there's going to be a few of these guys just moving around. I'm going to group this whole thing together right here. And uh, its conquest is being held right there. Now what can happen is helper T cells actually have little receptors here. And a macrophage that is holding its actual conquest, its antigen there. By the way, this little protein is called an MHC protein. So that little trophy here, the striped thing that's holding the antigen, is called the MHC protein. MHC stands for the major histocompatibility complex. I'll never want to say that again. Okay, there we go. What will happen is a helper T cell can actually bind to a macrophage that's presenting an antigen. And when that binds, a signal gets passed from the macrophage to the helper T cell, and the helper T cell becomes activated. Activated. And we're going we're gonna to represent activation with a little hat right here. So this helper T cell is now activated. And now if the, the helper T cell moves around, so you've got this basically activated helper T cell that's flowing around. Now the body hasn't really done anything yet. We've just done a couple steps here. Macrophage antigen presentation. Antigen presentation is what this is called by the MHC protein. Uh, we've had a helper T cell get activated in the process. Meanwhile, since there's a whole bunch of these actual pathogens that are flowing around, you've got all these B lymphocytes that are involved. B lymphocytes here. Each one, why do we have different colors here? Because each one's kind of specific. Each one produces one type of antibody. And uh, not every one of these is going to be a winner. So in this particular case here, you can think of it like an enzyme lock and key protein type of thing. Not every one of these is actually going to bind. So if you have... Let's just say these are some of the antigens attached to the pathogens here. Um, this, in this case right here, this one may not actually bind. So the shape of this antibody may not actually fit the shape of this antigen. So this one is no, no, no good for this particular battle. This one is out there. No, nope, that one doesn't bind. So this one's out for that particular battle. This one, no, nope, nothing's going on right here. Okay, so this one's out for this battle. This one binds, and it just so happens that this antibody has a shape that fits this particular antigen. And so what will happen is the B, the B cell will actually attach to some of these antigens as well. And this is kind of a gross 
simplification, but this, these are the basic principles here. Um, and that be the antigen gets attached to this particular antibody. Now, one, once that happens, that's a good thing, but what's supposed to happen is now that because this antibody actually matches the antigen that's invading at this point, what we want is we want to all of a sudden not make more of these. These guys are pretty useless for this particular invader, but we want to make a clone of these things. But it can't do that yet because it has to receive another signal, and that's where this helper T cell comes in. So actually, you have all these steps. You don't want to race, waste resources doing things that are not useful. So actually, the, once the B cell has actually been uh, recognized, or it has itself recognized the specific antigen that's actually invading, well, if there's another helper T cell that's been activated as a result of being interaction with this macrophage, what can happen is this helper T cell can bind here to this particular antigen and actually send an activation message across. And then guess what? It's like knighting. Oops, let's bring this out to the front. And the B cell becomes activated. Once the B cell becomes activated, check this out. Now we are in happy land. Now we can make a clone. So this is kind of a challenge and response uh, type of thing that is actually happening here. And uh, we're, this is called clonal selection. So we're not selecting for these, we're selecting for this one that actually can, this B cell that actually produces the correct type of antibody. The more antibodies we have, the faster these can attach. And the antibodies serve different purposes, but one of the purposes here is once we actually, once this becomes activated, it just starts and produces a clone of itself so we get loads and loads of these particular guys now uh, oops each one of these doesn't it's not producing an extra antigen they should be antigen free but anyways you get the point if you have a whole bunch of these then what can happen is that each of these antigens now each of these antigens can actually go around and sorry each one of these antibodies excuse me I can't, I want to separate that as well. These antibodies can go and attach and surround and basically mark off and identify who all the bad guys are. And it makes it a lot easier for additional macrophages, these green blobs here, these macrophages to come in and take them in and digest them a lot faster. So a lot of steps, big old mess, whole army, a lot of dead things everywhere. But in the end, uh, just a quick recap, macrophage is going to take in the bad guys by endocytosis present the antigen on a specific protein here that can help to activate a helper t cell meanwhile b cells are trying to recognize particular antigens with their specific antibodies that are attached if one gets attached and happens to be uh, activated by a helper t cell then that particular b cell producing that specific antibody actually goes through clonal selection you get a whole bunch a lot more than this, probably millions and millions of them, and they can therefore um, help to identify the pathogens a lot faster to be further digested by other macrophages. After everything is done, some of these helper T cells and B cells remain. When these guys get destroyed, uh, well, we don't need all these B cells. A lot of them actually get broken down, okay? Broken down, digested, we don't need them again, but actually, we can, we can maintain in the bloodstream a pretty high concentration of these antibodies. These are still flowing around, and you still have a bunch of these left over. These guys that are left over kind of stay in the bloodstream, and we consider them, these are kind of memory cells. Memory cells mean they stick around, and this is the basis of immunity, okay? An immune response and immunity. Next time these exact same guys come to visit, Next time these guys come to visit, well, they're going to have to interact with these memory cells. So they're already here, and we can actually produce more antibodies a lot faster than the first time. You don't have to go through this whole process. We already have a high concentration of all of these uh, B cells and antibodies, so we can do a pretty quick response. So you may not even get sick. Okay? That's the basis of this. Uh, hopefully that was somewhat useful. Uh, post some questions. One of the next videos will come up just with a really boring dry version of the notes, just lining this out uh, in five steps or so. But there you go. Uh, post any questions if you have them. Thanks.